Hey guys, welcome back. This video is a depthier update because I am a full month into my depth ear. And so I thought I would share with you some of my hits and misses. So, um, let me see. I have been keeping track of uh, my updates in my journal. I plan to, to do this every month um, in my bullet journal. And so this is for January. I don't know how well you can see this, but um, alongside each description, I either put a plus or a minus. So plus is what I consider to be a hit or a success. And then the minus is what I consider to be a miss uh, in terms of my goals. And, you know, just looking at this list, it reminds me that I accomplished more than I thought I had because January felt very sluggish and slow for me. So um, I just, I didn't feel like I was getting much done, but then when I wrote it all down, I, I ref, you know, was reflecting and I realized, actually I didn't do, I didn't do too bad. And I wrote some notes here so I'm not too uh, all over the place, but basically, um, with, uh, I, I sh maybe I should start off with my misses. So one thing that I had as a goal for depth here is that I would not buy any more crystals or jewelry and, uh, well, <clears throat> that, that um, didn't go according to plan. I did buy this right here what I'm wearing right now, which is a, a vintage crystal pendant. It's a blue lace agate. And um, yeah, so I don't have blue lace agate. So there is that and it's repurposed, which I like. I like when items um, are repurposed and other people can enjoy and find value in them. And you know, it was very, very affordably priced. So I know these are all excuses. I guess I should feel bad about the fact that this was a depthier miss for me for January, but I I love this so much. I love it so much and so I don't feel all that bad. And this does not mean that I'm just going to give up on this intention of a no buy year in terms of jewelry and crystals. I still intend very much February to December, and I'm, I'm optimistic about it. I think that I can go the rest of the time without any more jewelry pieces or crystals. And this is not counting any gifts I might receive because it is a milestone birthday for me this year. So that that is off limits. But in terms of my own purchases, I love it though. I do love it. So that was a miss, but I don't feel so bad. I gotta confess. Another goal that I had for my depth year was to go deeper with my writing. And I wasn't sure if I should categorize the month of January as a hit or miss for writing, but I think I'm going, going to count it as more of a success uh, because writing is so hard. It is so very hard and so the, the little bit that I can give myself, I'm gonna give myself. And for the month of January, uh, the, the goal was for me to continue revising my novel and to make some big headway in that. And I, I didn't get as far as I wanted to. I had a lot of stumbling blocks. And the very first chapter, which had the most amount of revisions, it, it was uh, um, a battle. <laughs> it was a battle for me to trudge my way through that, but I did. I, I finally did. Probably took me longer than it should have, uh, but I, I made it through, and so I count that as, as a success. So, because at least I kept trying. I didn't uh, write or revise every day, but I didn't give up. I didn't give up, so I'm counting that as a success. So as you know from, or maybe some of you know from my January recap, 
I was watching uh, Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, and it, it really did inspire me to do some more decluttering. And I have said before that I, I really do enjoy decluttering and organizing and I mentioned in that recap video that sometimes I do just get this insatiable urge or this compulsion to declutter and get rid of things. And um, Renee from Meadowlark Mystic, she was like, well, that's, she commented on that video. She was like, oh, fascinating. What's up with that? <laughs> And I was like, that is a really good question. I've never really sat down to contemplate why it is I, I that I go through these urges to get rid of things and to declutter. And, and it really didn't take me long when I actually took that moment and took that space to really ponder. It, it didn't take me long to kind of figure things out. And, where that partly stems from, but I would say it's a number of factors all clumped in one. You know, I do strive to be more deliberate in my consumption. I, I don't want to hold on to things just out of the sake of guilt or the fact that maybe somebody gifted it to me but, and then not use it when someone else could find value or use out of it. And so I, I don't have any qualms donating things that I really do feel others could enjoy or use. And then another thing is my apartment is small. I, I really like to minimize, to make the place feel more spacious and, and not as confined. Sometimes it's just boredom, feeling like I'm bored or maybe even sometimes if there's another facet in my life that I feel I don't have as much control over, then it's like, ooh, that, those kitchen pantries, I mean, they could use a good wipe down and re reorg. I think what is most interesting about my tendency to want to let things go, and this was a, a new realization for me, is that I think it does stem back to my childhood. I'm a daughter of immigrants, you know, two parents who did not have much when they were growing up and they came here to America and they worked their asses off and my sister and I were not in want of anything. They were, uh, you know, successful blue collar workers and they gave us such a good life. We really were not deprived of anything. And despite the fact that we were financially okay, there was always um, the fear of scarcity or poverty that kind of permeated the house, especially from my, from my mother. Um, and I, I don't think my, my mother definitely wasn't trying to burden us with it, but you could just tell that her fear of scarcity was on her mind a lot, a lot. And I don't think she could help it because of the way she grew up. I think through that, knowing that she was constantly thinking about it, some of the things that she would say I, I do think it it affected my sister and me. We're, we're much better about it now. I know that when we were both younger adults, we were definitely more money conscious and frugal and um, and now we realize that we don't have to feel guilty about um, spending money on certain things that we want or will enjoy. You know, we've worked hard for, you know, the money that we have and so it's it's okay, right? It's okay as long as it aligns with our values and um, then it's fine. So I think my sister and I have both really grown up from that that scarcity mentality and I think it's still something that I I struggle with and it resurfaces 
I'm not sure if I'm articulating this well. I mean, in my mind, it makes sense to me, but I think my tendency to want to let go of things is um, a weird way of dealing with the fear of scarcity. So a lot of people, when they have that fear, they want to collect and hold on. I am the opposite. It's in this weird way, my preparing myself for this hypothetical future of financial strife. In the case that I would in the future, which may or may not happen, but sometimes I do have a tendency to project into the future. But in that event that I am f suffering financially and I'm forced to live with less and let go of certain things, then I am prepared because I know that I can. I have in the past, I can do it again, I can live and thrive with less, if I'm making any sense at all. So I, I think my tendency to declutter is a combination of all those things. Kind of related, but I'm, I'm going to segue into tarot and oracle decks. I watched a video from Sarah from the Sunset Bow, and she had posted about her tarot con Marie fail, <laughs> which was pretty much her just quickly talking about how she was going through her decks and reassessing whether she wanted to let some of them go or not. And it, it came down to whether she wanted to get rid of her everyday witch tarot. And it was hilarious. You should watch it. I will leave a link to that video. But she pretty much inspired me to take another look at my tarot deck collection and kind of reassess whether um, these were all decks that, I, that really did speak to me and spark joy or they were ones that I uh, wanted to let go so that other people could enjoy them. And I do this intermittently anyway. My deck collection, I've said before, isn't so huge. So I'm, I'm able to kind of keep it under control. I went through my decks and there are two that I passed on. One being the Terror of the Magical Forest. And I, I think I bought that on more of an impulse buy, a, a retail therapy purchase. I was probably watching Kelly, Kelly Bear, and you know, that deck is adorable. It really is. It is super adorable. But I will say that, um, and I, I trimmed the borders off and everything, and I, I think the deck is great. But you know, when I, I picked that deck up and I was looking at it, and it's like it immediately said to me, you just don't use me enough and you never will. So you really should pass me on. And I knew that that was the thing to do because my kind of measuring stick for whether I wanted to want to keep my decks or not is, okay, so I pick a deck every month to be my working deck. So I, you know, I, I imagine this deck and I think to myself, am I going to enjoy working with you the entire month or am I going to be thinking about the fact that I'd rather work with another deck? And with Tarot of the Magical Forest, my immediate thought was, you're cute, but, you're, but I would rather work with my Crystal Unicorn deck. If I'm going to work with an animal RWS clone, I would so much rather work with my Crystal Unicorn. So I have passed that deck on to a more loving home. And then the other deck, which I knew right away, even though I discussed it in my uh, 31 Days of Tarot with the intention that I wanted to work with it more, as soon as I like picked it up and like looked through it, I knew right away, I'm like, you just, Julie, you don't, you don't love this deck at all. I mean, you, I, you just really don't feel much for this deck. And once again, 
you know, if I were to work with this deck for the entire month, for sure, I would, I would be feeling like, hmm, I'd rather work with something else. And that is the Marshmallow Marseille. So um, I have the Fairy Tarot, which is a Pip Style deck, and the Tarot of a Moon Garden, another Pip Style deck. And I would much prefer to work with those two over the Marshmallow Marseille. And so I have already sold that deck. I'm happy that I was able to pass them on. And it's funny, with the sale of the Marshmallow Marseille, I thought, oh, I've got some money. And so, of course, immediately I go on to Etsy, I go on to, to Amazon, I'm looking, and, and then I just stopped myself. So I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself because I, I stopped myself. And, you know, I'm looking at my tarot wish list in my bullet journal, and it's like, I don't really have any decks that I'm, I, I, I seriously want. And, um, you know, the Chrysalis Tarot was one that I had put back on my wish list. But when I really thought about it, it's like, well, do you want the Chrysalis Tarot? Or do you want uh, Renee's version? Renee from Metal Arc Mystic again. Renee's version of Chrysalis Tarot because she did some beautiful things to her deck. And she's what inspired me, me to put it back on my wish list. But in actuality, it's like her deck is beautiful. If I got just, you know, regular Chrysalis Tarot off Amazon, would I, would I be enthralled by it? I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm still gonna hold off on that and 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 think about that some more. I've got decks, over, you know, over Christmas that they're new. I I haven't worked with them yet. Like I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I you know again I'm still allowing myself one deck purchase a month. And for January I held up to that. So that was another hit that I you know it was a success. I only bought myself one deck. I feel like with the Tarot Oracle I've been doing pretty well. I've been doing pretty well. Now my original Depth Year video I mentioned that I wanted to uh, work more with Le Normand. I haven't yet and that is still something I plan to do. I did not mention in that video that I also am planning to work more with the Marseille. And so for January, I did finish reading Tarot on Earth, which was, I'm so proud of myself that I did that as well. So at least I'm making headway in the Marseille territory. Now it's just a matter of kind of dipping my toes back into Le Normand, especially because I have a new deck as a Christmas gift and it's beautiful. And so maybe one of my future videos will be devoted to Le Normand, but we'll see. That's my depth year so far. I feel pretty good about it. Overall, I feel pretty good about it. And we still have to remind ourselves that we're only in the beginning of February. We still have so many more months to go. And um, I just have to also keep reminding myself that I, I should stick to the goals I have, despite the Depth Year Facebook page, which is awesome, and I love popping in on there and seeing what everyone's doing. It also makes me want to add more goals to my to my Depth Year, because people have such great intentions that align with things that I want to do. But yeah, I just got to keep reminding myself: no, stick with what you have. You can be flexible and reassess as the months go on, but right now, you're pretty good. You're still pretty good with the goals that you have, and so I'm planning to stick with these for now, and we'll continue to reassess as the year goes on. I would love to hear about how your depth year is going if you are doing a depth year, so please drop a comment below, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.